split up into all different and then there's the auxiliaries in Clare, which were initially based out in Killaloo. You know, these are in forensic detail from the day they were born nearly to the day they died. And there's a timeline on what the auxiliaries did. The auxiliaries, I'm sure you know, were in Killaloo. And then after the, after the truce, they moved to Corrifin. And then they left uh, Ireland in 1922, in January. And so we'll just concentrate tonight now on the, um, the Clare barracks. Or we'll even do the huts as well, and we'll do the protection posts. And these are all between 1916 and 1921. Now there were, and you know, I won't even go before 1916 because we'll just stick to the revolutionary period. But if you go to 1915, 1914, 1913, you'll find different protection posts. The protection posts were built to protect the landlords. Uh, from, you know, from the locals. And basically um, they were normally put in for two or three years. Uh, and, you know, these landlords blatantly obviously weren't very popular. Um, the huts then were just, uh, well, the barracks were, were, the, were the big ones. Um, the huts were smaller and they were placed around the county. I mean, you know, 78 is a lot. When you think about it, when you consider how many guard, guard barracks we have in Clare today, maybe seven or eight at the most. Um, this is the classic of all. This is the back of Bonratty Castle. That was the RAC station. It was burnt down um, before the War of Independence. Uh, beautiful picture. Again, we. I'm just going to flip through. You can go through all this yourself. Um, so what we do? Um, what's here is the 78 barracks huts protection posts. Uh, I've just popped in again the activity report, which is a, basically a timeline. It's brilliantly done. It's only just a couple of pages, but it really kind of it gives you a flavour for what the RA were doing in that period uh, in all three brigades. Um, again, as I say, a few newspaper articles, and then all this is online. Um, there is the nominal roles for there is there was um, maybe seven hundred RIC officers in Clare at any in any given year they changed every year and then the numbers dropped dramatically in by nineteen twenty for obvious reasons and then as we all know in nineteen twenty one that's when the black and tens well they came in in, in twenty but they started to be, become part of the nominal roles we call it in nineteen twenty one so Clare had eight RIC districts. And um, these are them. Uh, there's Ennis Diamond, obviously, Corrifin, Bally Vaughan, Ennis, and Kilrush. And then you have Tullock, Killaloo, and Six Mile Bridge. Now, just if I superimposed the IRA brigade map, a map of the three brigades over that, you would find that the East Clare Brigade had to deal with three districts, okay? The Mid Clare Brigade had to deal with Bally Vaughan, Ennis Diamond, Corrifin four districts. Okay, so they had a lot on their plate. And then the West Clare Brigade had one district. Okay, and the HQ speaks for itself. Uh, in Kilrush, it was Kilrush and Ballyvaughan. It was initially Ballyvaughan, but by the time it came to 1920, for some reason, they moved it to Listoon Varna. So this is them now. And um, the bold letter is each district has a HQ. Okay. So the HQ is always in bold letters, so that's Ennis. And then these are all the satellite huts, protection posts. We'll just do Ennis here, for instance, Banner Cali, Clare Castle, Corsheen, Inch, Kildicert, Lizzie Casey, Termaclan, Ballinran, Claremont, and Newhall. So they were part of the Ennis district. Bally Vaughan then was the HQ. Then you had Bally Dura Hut. Uh, and then you had Bally Ring, Karen, Doolan, Fenor Moore, Liston Varna and Newquay, Corrifin, you can see had a lot of satellites and they were in Boston, Connolly, Flanquin, which is Father Ted's house, believe it or not, uh, Ina, Morris Mills, um, Ruan Torber. A joint station is one that's on the border uh, with, a, with another county. And as we all know, Torber is it's combined with Boston. Uh, PPs are protection posts, which were to deal, deal more with landlords than anything else. And then there are the rest of them, Ennis Diamond, Kilfenora, Lahinch, Lemina, Liscanner, Milton Mowdy, Mullock, um, Quilty, Elumbon, and Renine. 
Now, they're the dates there that the huts or the posts were there. So you'll see a lot of them fizzled out long before 1921. As a matter of fact, by 1921, um, nearly 60 of them were gone. But again, for obvious reasons, and we won't go through that. So Killaloo is again a joint station it, because it was virtually on the border with Tipperary, with Marley, um, with um, Balnad just across the bridge. So then you have Mount Shannon, O'Brien's Bridge, you have Gunlow, Scarif, Whitegate, Minor Hut, one of the first nine bushes was in Minor Hut. And um, that's in Killaloo, Kilrush, then Carragahoe, Curraclare, Dunbeg, Kilkee, Kilmel, Knock, Labashida. Cree, and then we're nearly there now, Six Mile Bridge, Ardnacusha, Bally McLoon, Broadford, Bunratty, Kilkishan, Kilmore, Newmarket and Fergus, one of the few that stayed on the whole way in 1921. You, you can see Quinn, I'll show you a beautiful one in Quinn now, but it, it was gone by 1916. Bally Kelly Cut was gone by 1919. And finally, we're in Tulla, Tulla stayed the distance, but Boy Dyke was gone, Carhan was gone, Fiegel stayed the distance, it stayed to 21, Loch Graney was gone, Callum's Mills was gone by 1920, Carhart was gone in 1919, and Dirty Moore was gone in 1919 as well. So look, this is a map of Clare in 1916, and there, this, and there were 72 then. Okay, so look, there they were. Every, you couldn't, you know, every few miles was a hut, a post, so well policed territory. So this is okay. So here we are now, and this is 1916-72, but this is 1921. There's only 18 left. Okay, and that includes the auxiliaries out in Killaloo as well. So you can see they they had to abandon all the peripheral huts. They moved into the towns, okay, for protection. They had no hope um, out in the periphery. So look, this is the activity report. Uh, it's actually very well written from 1935. So how can I do any better than that? So again, if you go through, uh, so now you have, you have all the information you want on Find My Past, but you want to know where they were for obvious reasons. So this, these are excellent maps, um, Ordnance Survey maps, uh, the historical ones, and this brings us back to the time of the barracks. So we'll, we'll do it alphabetically. We're in Arden Crusher. So this is in the Six Mile Bridge RIC district. It, it lasted until 1920, which was a long time. So you go into the, now this can be normally a bit vague, um, but I think we can easily read the Constabulary Barracks there. So we can only basically presume this is it. Now, all those buildings are gone today and they are replaced by those. So the barracks is there. That's right in the middle of Arden Crusher. So I'm only going to do this for one barracks. We'll do it for Arden Crusher. So the role of officers in 1916, they had one sergeant and they had one, two, three, four, five uh, constables. Okay. Now, it, excuse me. Um, so you'll see that the sergeant stayed the same, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. He had an extra sergeant in 1920. And you can see more constables were starting to show up for obvious reasons. and then. It was burnt down in April 1920, and the person who owned the building was Sir Lionel McMahon, and he was awarded £2,000 compensation on the 17th of April 1920. Now, we could do this for all of them, but we just don't have the time. I'm not going to do the Blackwater tragedy. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Two boys were shot while, um, while searching for bird's nests um, in Partine which is not too far away, and that's the memorial there. So there are a lot of protection posts, and I keep saying about the protection posts, they were just built. This one only lasted two years. There's no protection posts just went up and down. They were very flimsy, so they don't show up. I, I have one now that did show up in a map, but the rest of them have, they definitely don't. So all we do is we just go to the house, Balinwan, and we can only presume that somewhere here on his property or her property, the hut was built to protect them for whatever reasons. And you can see they had three constables, no less, and it lasted two years and it was, um, it was established in 1917. There's another hut, hut in Valley Dura between this Tunverna and Karen. Now you can see that was pretty popular, um, but the hut was different to the protection posts. It was bigger, it had a bigger purpose. 
and then it was burnt down in 1920. This is the witness statement of Andrew O'Donoghue, and this is the details of what they did on, on what night they burnt it down. And in some of the activity reports, as you'll see in a second, it actually gives the names of all the people who did burn it down. Another protection post, um, again, three constables there. And then these are the people who burnt it down, and that's the date that they burnt it down. So again, this is Bally Kelly. This is an unusual one now. This is very unusual, actually, because um, Bally Kelly features in all the books, features in photographs, uh, lots of constables, um, and uh, sergeants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Even photographs start to show up in the books of Bally Kelly. But strange enough, there is no such place as Bally Kelly in County Clare. And it's yes, it's it's actually right next to it. It's only in the, in the witness statements, it's mentioned as being within five kilometers of Broadford. Now, this is the only constabulary barracks within five kilometers, and it's big enough, and it's in Kilban. And this, it's gone now, of course, um, but this is where it was. The, well, it's pretty obvious. Um, constabulary barracks was here, and this is the site today. So it was a sizable, it was a sizable barracks. Um, you know, two sergeants, no less, loads of constables, and it, it was uh, it closed uh, in in 1919. And these are photographs of it, so you can see it certainly wasn't a hut, and that is not made of wood. And again, as I say, uh, these are photographs taken. So look, Ballynock, uh, this is in Kilimona in the Curfman district. It lasted two years. It's a protection post. Mind you, there are three constables, and then it was closed in 1919. Another hut in Valley McLuhan. Now, this is the only one where it actually showed up on a map. I might thank Pat Ryan for finding it. There it is, which is, yeah, which is very unusual to see the exact location of a hut on, uh, on one of the, well, it isn't on that map, but Pat found it on a different map, uh, which is very, very unusual for something that was so temporary. So Valley and the Cali Barracks, uh, that certainly hasn't disappeared because it's still there today a little bit upgraded uh, it lasted uh, let's see now how long it lasted to 1919 it's in the ns district uh, that this is a photograph mary nester was kind of mary hester i should say was kind enough to give me this and there it is uh, years later i think that was 20 years later so it's still there and it's still there today again it had constables it had a sergeant and then it was burnt down and this person was um compensated so Bally Reen, or Bally Ryan, this is near Doolan. Now it's out in the middle of nowhere on private land, but this spot seems to fit the fit the map, if that's the best way I can put it. Again, to give you the role of officers, it didn't last very long. Bally Vaughan, well, Bally Vaughan did last uh, well until 1920 when it was the HQ and then it moved down to Listoon Farnet. There it is. Um, and there it is today. I, I believe if you there was a huge newspaper article on Quinn's craft shop back in 2019 and in the garden behind they have still lots of memorabilia from the barracks. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a combination of the two because the sizable barracks there you can, you can see that. And then um, again uh, this because it was a HQ it had the district inspector it had a head constable and it had a sergeant, and then it had lots of constables again. So you can see there are all the different years, the, the, the same DI, the same DI, and then things start to change. And then they have sergeants, and then in 1920, lots more uh, constables. There's no photograph of it, uh, of what it was. These are just ambushes from witness statements around the Ballyvaughan area, Bodike. Uh, there it is here, very easy to spot, and it's the, um, this is a classic one now. This is the iconic one because I took, I tried to get a picture of it today or a couple of years back in the very same place that this iconic photograph was taken, if I remember, in 1914, 1913. So it's the same barracks, um, that's gone, obviously, uh, it, that's fresh air, and there's... Which the, aspect is that picture? Is that picture on the right? Oh, absolutely. That, that photograph is everywhere, you know, as a, an iconic photograph of the RIC. And there, um, there um, obviously, I can give you blow by, blow by count. He was killed in one of the ambushes. Um, as a matter of fact, for all it's worth, 
um, every one of these people has at least a two, three page profile in the alphabetical instance. So if you find someone here that's of any interest to you, you can go back to where we were earlier into the alphabetical index, look them up, and you will find a detailed uh, history on his involvement in Clare. And a lot of a lot of them flew in and out of Clare and they went around the country. And I'm not going to give you any information on them outside of Clare, but I will tell you all about them in Clare. Uh, and then there's another witness statement on, on how they burnt down the barracks and they obviously rebuilt it again. Boston then, again, there, there it is. Um, it, there's not much of it left, obviously. And again, as I say, they're the role of officers, one sergeant and a few constables. And it lasted until 1920, which is unusual. And it was on the border, as we know, with October Rockford, the most beautiful of all, one of, well, not of all, but some of them, others are beautiful as well. There it is today. And that's the, I took the picture from the church because um, uh, there were some famous attacks on it. And the RA, for obvious reasons, went into the church, which is, I, can't, I don't have a photograph of the church here. Unfortunately, no, I don't. But the church is literally across the road and uh, and that's where they attacked it from. And it was, um, uh, you know, a, a, a wise place to have the attack from because they were looking down into it. And um, and there's the details. It was on the 4th of August, 1919. 12 men under the command of Eddie Larkin take up positions in Broadford Church grounds and open fire in the RSC barracks. They retreat after 10 minutes, but the RSC carry on firing for hours. The attack wasn't, it was a decoy attack because it was designed purely to agitate the local RSC officers. And then it, it, it allowed them then to move around and attack other barracks as well. Uh, again, there are all the constables that had a sergeant, um, same sergeant all the way down here to William Carl. Now, Broadford was open in 1921. So the brown ink are all black and tans. And again, you can go into any one of those in the alphabetical index and you will find out where they came from, um, et cetera, et cetera, and invariably what pension they got and where they retired to if we have that information. So again, um, this is the Broadford Church ambush in, um, in the witness statement by John Bishop Ryan. And then it actually hit the newspapers around the world, believe it or not. Uh, just Joe, Joe Clancy's, uh, actually it was at his grave recently in Killaloo. And this is his witness statement on uh, the attack. There was another attack on the main street. Um, we won't go there, but it was, um, this was on the 25th of September, 1920, but it's all there and it's in the activity report as well. So, um, Bunratty, again, we did, we saw Bunratty, there it is, uh, the castle, uh, there's Dirty Nellis here and there's uh, Bunratty, you can't see it now because it's gone. And look at that castle then and how it has been renovated, absolutely amazing. And again, it, it had one sergeant, they're all the constables, etc. It was burnt down. This man, Thomas Sturdert, was awarded 2000. Again, these, this is the date um, it was burnt down. And then these are all the names and addresses, no less, of all the people who did burn it down. Uh, Carhart, and oh, the most beautiful place on earth is Carhart, are in this area, Loch Craney, absolutely incredibly beautiful. The house is still there, but the hut, um, or what would you call it, the entrance hut at the gate, the gate lodge, um, was um, a, a post, uh, if you could call that a hut, maybe that's not what it looked like uh, 100 years ago. Uh, Paddy Lowry, who was retired, who is a retired sergeant, a guard a sergeant from East Clare, actually showed me all the different posts, all the different barracks in East Clare, and I thank him uh, eternally grateful for that. And then these are the, it had a sergeant, it had constables, and then it closed down in Jan, January 1920. And there's Car House for you today. And there's the lake, which is beautiful. And there's the like, activity report of all the people who burnt it down. Uh, Carbonite Cut, um, oh, this is out in the middle of nowhere uh, near Curriffin, Curriffin District. Can't have been that small though, because it had four constables and a sergeant. And again, it disappeared. It was it, the last time it was open in 1920 and it was closed in 21. 
Yeah, Matilla, that's a protection post, so we know what that was for. I just drew in that photograph, that's from Collins Barracks, of what a hut did look like. Um, the roof was just cut off there, but you can see they were, they were for the rifles. Um, there was, a, you know, some of them have held more than one person, so they must have had more bunks. And that's what they look like, pretty basic, obviously. Uh, Carahan was a lovely little place. Um, yeah. It's still there indeed. And there's a photograph I came across of it 100 years ago, or maybe 120 years ago, or 110 years ago. And then that's what it looks like today. Amazingly, actually, the day I went there, there was a removal on, talking about bad timing. And the poor lady had died who'd lived there for so long. And I, yes, and I spoke to her son. And she had said they had inherited, she had inherited from her father, who was in the East Clare Brigade. And after it was burnt down, he, he rebuilt it as a carbon copy of what it was originally. I mean, there isn't much difference. And, husband, yes, and he, he was in the East Clare Brigade, uh, what I believe. Anyway, um, so it had a sergeant and it had all these constables. But isn't it lovely to see, still see it today? And uh, anyway, and then it was burnt down, of course, and there was compensation 2000. And there are all the people who burnt it down, etc. etc. Karen RIC Barracks, well, that's definitely there today because it's Cassidy's Pub and Restaurant, and we'll say no more. And there's the constables and the sergeants. It was burnt down, but obviously, again, we don't know if that's the replica of what it looked like before. Cargo Holt, uh, still there. Uh, it was open until 1920. It's obviously in the Kilrush district. There she is. And then there's all the sergeants, the constables, etc., etc. And then it was closed in 1921 for blatantly obvious reasons. And then again, as I say, um, there's they're just um, there's the West Clare Brigade activity report of tax that they had on that barracks and that area. Castle Fergus. Well, we know where Castle Fergus is. It's not far from Newmarket or the moment. And it was famous um, during the conscription trek. There was a, um, a march, and um, the march, it was indeed John Ryan was killed here. That's his plaque. It's actually on the wall just next to that house. And that's the Castle Fergus. They came down from there, and that's where the crowd and the RIC met. And he was shot. And that's his funeral in Newmarket and Fergus. And that's his The castle still standing. Um, I'm sure you know where it is. Um, that's this is the road. Let me get this right. This is the it's actually that that arrow is completely wrong. It's actually here. So in the old days we used to come in from Limerick here and we turned, and that's the road to Ennis. And that's it today. And then again, these are all the constables, the sergeants, uh, and it, it survived until 1921. So, it was, so the RIC had left, or most of them had anyway. It was mainly, well, I suppose you could go half and half, but it was there was a fine number of black and tans in it then. And then, of course, well, it's in the most famous of areas, uh, Joe Barrett. Uh, that's his um, witness statement on attacks on the barracks. So Claremont, which isn't too far away from where Joe Bart lived, um, house is still there, beautiful house. And it had, um, let's get this right, yeah, it had a protection post, so we know what that was for. And it had just three, or three constables and it lasted until 1918. Connolly Hut is here. Um, if you're driving through Connolly, there's the church here. You carry on to, um, you carry on to kill, kill, or to kill rush, kill key or whatever. Um, but if you, at the bend there, if you take a right turn, it goes way up the hill, way up the hill. For obvious reasons, they put all these huts at the highest point to give them, obviously, maximum uh, lookouts. It's, there's a beautiful bungalow there today, and uh, there's no point taking a picture of it. Um, but this, these are all the constables. And again, as I say, they got a sergeant in 1917 and more constables. And then that's um, when it was burnt down and they're all the volunteers who burnt it down. And that's the attack. Well, the attack is different now. The attack was one of the famous attacks on uh, Connolly Barracks, uh, on Connolly. And um, I won't go through it. Uh, it was on the 19th of July. 
and it was they didn't they didn't get in uh, but i'll let you read that to understand what happened Kurt Clare, uh, famous infamous famous for when it was burnt down and again um one sergeant four constables etc etc and then it was burnt down and uh, the abandoned barracks so this is what happened you see it was abandoned at this stage but the RAC officers took shelter and then there was attacked by our uh, IRA volunteers and completely destroyed broke all the windows and they tarred the inside and they painted it on the outside so that's what it looked like famous iconic picture uh, and again as I say that's what it looks like today actually that's still there um, but that late may obviously gone, and I presume that's on the site as well. It's a holiday home, I believe. And then that's Liam Hawke's um, version of what happened that night. Curfin, uh, it's gone. It's right, it was right next to the church, burnt down. And again, pretty big barracks now because um, definitely a big barracks. Because um, it had district, it was a HQ. Had a district inspector, it had a head constable, it had a sergeant, two sergeants, no less. And there's a lot of constables there. And look at that. Um, yeah, two sergeants again, two sergeants, head constable, and then district inspector. And then it 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 lasted. Not alone was there one barracks in in Kurupin, but there was a second one uh, in 1921. And then after the truce was signed, you had the you had the um, you apart from all these people and a lot of black and tans, and in this and in the second one. Now John Minnan, from who is the historian for the Midlayer Brigade, reckons that the second one was in that it was all that was in the workhouse. The workhouse was here. There were that's the first barracks. Okay, that was so we're nineteen twenty one now. So they built the second one, and then they put all the auxiliaries in here as well which could have been anything up to 90 of them, and the RIC and the Black and Tans. So, and you still had this barracks here. So, um, you know, the fascinating, um, fascinating stories what happened in Corfin after the truce. There's not one beside the courthouse. Well, I have no idea. Uh, according to John, I, I have, no, sorry, Mr. Uh, oh yeah, that's completely different. But um, yeah, the, the, yeah, the black and tans were in the courthouse in Anderson. So look, this is the second one, and look at all the black and tans. There's actually more people in the second one than there was, and it was only open in 1921. So you can see that's there. All the people, district inspector. You had a head constable. You had all these sergeants and all these in, and they were based here. And then you had this lot. And a lot of black and tans then, and you had the auxiliaries. So, you know, certainly Corfin was not the place to live in, I can tell you. So, um, this is 1970, 1918. This is the Cree Protection Post. Uh, I won't go there, but, um, you know, all the auxiliaries did was drink and, uh, and terrify everybody. And if you turn the black and tans on top of that, then it wouldn't have been a pretty place. So uh, here we go now. We're down to Crescine. And this was uh, amazing. Uh, after I was just, I just passed it and uh, as one does. And uh, I knocked on the house next door and he said, yeah, that's the RAC barracks untouched. And uh, I was, I was, so it's amazing. Even when I, how many times I went into all these different villages looking for the RAC barracks or what was left of them. And it's just amazing how the first person you'd ask, is this the RAC barracks? Just to confirm it, and not alone was it the RAC barracks, but you got a brilliant story to go with it, you know? And the first person you meet, I mean, it isn't like I was searching the town for somebody to tell me this to confirm this with the barracks. It was the first person I met and I'd say, so I can only imagine the second person I'd have met would have told me the same thing. So everybody knows where all these barracks are, believe me. Uh, so this is um, Crescine, it's on the main road, or what was the old main road uh, when we all drove through it on our way to Galway. It's, um, it's, uh, anyway, it's, it, there it is. We used to drive out of Crescine and that, that was the road to Galway. So it was on the left hand side heading out. And then again, there are all the sergeants, etc., etc. And it was, um, of course, maybe say burnt down. And again, Derry Moore, my God. What a place to live 
uh, Dirty Moore House. I mean, give me a break. It must have been well, it must be the most. I mean, I know all the houses from Clare, the big ones from Hugh Ware's book, and I can tell you for a fact that it has to be the most spectacular one. I mean, I won't even show you. I can't even show you where the gate lodge is because it's so far away. But anyway, uh, not a very popular person um, for obvious reasons. Oh yeah, sure. You were here. This was Gore, one of the biggest landlord lords in Clare at the time. And um, it lasted until 1919. Again, these are all the people to protect them. Uh, Doolan, I haven't a clue where the one in Doolan is, but I know it was there and it's in the on McNamara's land. Um, that was Doolan House there. So whether Doolan House had been converted into, uh, more than likely Doolan House was the barracks and that it was rented out to the RSE, which would have been quite common. They wouldn't have built barracks everywhere. They, they could easily just uh, rent a house and turn it into a barracks. And these are all the constables, etc., cetera, sergeants. Um, uh, like he, and then uh, it was burnt down and Reginald Gore, again, the man who lived here, he owned the barracks in Doolan, so, as well as housing to many people's land. I think he owned half of Venice as well. So we're into Doonbeg, so I know I have to go very fast. So there's um, the road through Doonbeg, there's the bridge, um, uh, the golf course is over here somewhere, but if you turn left, there's the constabulary barracks. No, there's nothing there today. And this is what appears to be the site. I have no idea what the bell is. And uh, again, these are all the people who were there. Uh, nice picture of Dubeg and uh, Liam Hopp telling us how he burnt down. And then NSRC barracks. Well, I sure as hell don't have to show you this one. It, that's still there. And now you can see a lot of constables here. And then if we go all the way down to 1921, you can see a hell of a lot of black and tans as well. And I'll tell you half of them were black and tans. And uh, that's what our patrol looked like in 1921. You know, you, they weren't sending out just one tender anymore. And then, you know, they just to make a point, they would run at, at least one, if not two, a day between Ennis and Ennis Diamond to make a point. But they'd also have troops on the train at the same time, you know. Not a good time to have an ambush. You know, they were really ambushes just started to fade out after that. Um, so Ennis Diamond, well, we, as you say, there's Ennis Diamond. This is the barracks just after the RSC left. Uh, this would have been January 21. This is the Nuclear Brigade, uh, presumably the Ennis Diamond uh, uh, company taking over it. Uh, it was burnt down after, if I remember, after the Civil War. And then pretty big because it had a district inspector, et cetera, et cetera, sergeants, bucket loads of constables. And then this was it in 1921. You can see hardly any RSC left, but lots of black and tans. So you're probably right, there's the courthouse. So what they did was they put the black and tans in the courthouse and they put the RIC, that's a chunk of it there, in the uh, barracks. So we won't go into how it was burned down. That's what's there today. Uh, but thankfully, thankfully, the courthouse is still there. And we won't even dream of going through any other reprisals. And um, that's a different story. And the beautiful memorial, etc. But that's all about Ennis Diamond. Uh, and here's for no more now, which is in Ballyvaughan district. Uh, we we can see it. It's there, Constabulary Constab Constab Barracks, but it took a while to find it, and there it is. And there the role of officers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then um, our Mora, as it was called, and then these are how it was burnt down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's the compensation. Fecal, uh, fecal is there, or well rebuilt, um, right on the spot. Uh, we can see it because the map tells us it's there, right there. And then, as I say, um, there are all the sergeants, constables, etc. And, and this survived the whole way. So you can see in 1921, it was packed with black and tans. And this is the fecal ambush. Um, let's see, the barracks is here. And the ambush was way, way down at the post office. I'm not going to go into it. They, for some reason, they have constabulary barracks there. That is absolutely, completely, and completely, absolutely wrong. But that's where the ambush was. So this is the ambush. That's the new memorial that was put up there, I think, a couple of years back. And we won't go into the ambush. But it's all there in their own words. Glenn Quinn, well, that's Father Ted's. And, and there she blows. Uh, so there was a hook there. He must have been very popular. Um, 
Uh, well, actually, no, I think about it, it was a hut. So maybe it was for a different purpose. So look there, all the sergeants, and it was closed in 1920. In Lombard, that's where, um, where we come to one of the famous ambushes at the beginning of um, the War of Independence. It was closed in 1920. I believe um, I believe me uh, uh, memory went up re recently right on the spot where that ambush was. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm hopefully yeah because you really I wouldn't I I went up and down that road numerous times trying to find out where 81 Cross was, but I, I can't. I'm looking forward to um, uh, taking photographs of that memorial. Ina, uh, I passed it there only last week, and there's a lovely uh, sandwich booth right there on the spot where that truck is. Uh, where the Aina hut was, and again it had um, a sergeant and constable. The people who burnt it down. Inch, uh, Inch is obviously a hut again. Now that's another famous one. Um, it was attacked virtually at the same time as Connolly. They moved down. Uh, as far as I remember now, Inch was the first RIC hut attacked in the War of Independence in Clare. And from what I can make out from the map, it was there somewhere. Um, it certainly wasn't down here anyway, because they would not have put it in a place. All their huts were at, at, at the highest point um, that they could put it at. So I uh, wouldn't imagine they would have put it down in a valley. It wouldn't have made any sense. So look, there's the attack, famous attack. And one of the consulates got um, um, a constabulary medal. Actually, it went up for sale only a year ago and it was sold for £4,800. Uh, that's the attack um, again from Joe Barrett and again as I say that's his and that's just what a typical hut looked like so that's what more than likely was in each. Kildysert, um, that's Mary Hester again and I thank her for this. It's gone now. Uh, it's an ESB but it's sorry yeah it, it's actually an ESB. Oh hold on sorry my mistake it's a guard station now but the which makes sense but the um, the barracks is blatantly obviously gone. And again, there are all the constables, are, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, Liam Hopp tells us uh, on his attacks. And so does Michael Brennan as well. So Kilfenora, this tricky one now because it's very vague. They just throw constabulary barrack on the map. Now your guess is as good as mine, but my guess it's one of these ones. It, you know, it, it's pretty obvious that it, it's very ambiguous but it's definitely one of these. And it's more than likely, let's see now, was it burnt down? Yeah, it was. So it was rebuilt again. And there, this is the um, witness statement of the attack. Kilkee definitely is not gone because it's a guard barracks today. And there it is now overlooking the sea and the prom. That's the north side of, of the north part of Kilkee. So it's uh, pretty big now. It had um, sergeants, obviously, lots of constables, and it lasted the the term of the War of Independence, and it had lots of black and tans in it. And then this is um, uh, again Liam Hock and his witness statement. Um, and then you have an activity report from the West Clare Brigade on their attack on the barracks, and that's a map of Kuki. It's taken from the witness statement and it goes through in detail what attack they did. Kukishan definitely gone, and there's um, all the people in it. I'll just fly through the photographs. This is Killaloo, still there. And as I said, Sergeant Paddy Laurie um, showed me all the different uh, former RIC barracks in East Clare, and he was the last uh, Garza sergeant to sleep overnight in this barracks. Now, it's still there. Um, I can't remember what it is. And then we won't go into the, well, this is Killaloo. It was pretty big. It had a district inspector. It had a, a constable. Now, I mean, take a look at it here now, okay? It's not the biggest of buildings, but look how many people were in it in 1921. You had a, a district inspector, you had a head constable, you had a sergeant, 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 another sergeant. All of these are black and tens, and they were all packed into that building, 1921. And of course, we all know what happened in 1920 then, in September, or November, sorry, it was the Scarf murders, uh, the Scarf martyrs, and then they, that was, we won't go there, but that's they, where all the um, auxiliaries were based in the Lakeside Hotel. That's the barracks, and that's the bridge where they were killed. 
pretty brutal. And um, I won't go any more into that. Uh, you could read Thomas McCamara's brilliant book on it. Um, well, again, that's exactly where it was. Um, and again, as I say, if we fly through it, uh, there's another famous ambush here where Sean Green was killed. Um, the IRA attacked the RIC coming out of the church here. The RIC barracks was here, brave men, and the and the and the army were only down here somewhere. But anyway, they shot Sean Carroll, and then one of the RIC. So there's the church. Okay, that's Sean. That's where Sean Breen's memorial is today. So there's the church. This is the view from Sean Breen's memorial. There's the church in there. So the sergeant was killed there, and then just here, which is where this photograph was taken, is where Sean Green was killed. And that's his memorial, as I'm sure you all know, in Kuma. So um, again, as I say, and that's all about that. Um, and then they burnt it down, uh, et cetera. So look, Kilmore, out in the middle of nowhere, um, it's between Broadford and Parteen. I crossed a dangerous corner to stop, I can tell you, because cars are whizzing around there. And if you want to take a photograph of the gate, you put your mouth in your hands. Because <laughs> uh, you have no idea who's coming around that corner. Uh, but I did. And the, the barracks was up there somewhere. And then it was burnt. OK, Kilmore, that's the same one. Big enough. I mean, you can see, you know, that's a photograph of, of the constables there in 1913. Well, Kilrush now, this speaks for itself. The rush is blatantly, obviously, still there. Um, and then the, uh, uh, the constables were based there. And then when the Black and Tans came in, this was a club. It doesn't say what kind of a club it was, but it was a club. And that's where they put the Black and Tans. And then there's, um, etc. You know, it's pretty big. It was a, obviously a HQ. So I had district inspector and all these constables. And then at the end of the war, you can see even the district inspector was a Black and Tan. And then you can see, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of black intense then. And then there was the famous attack on the 22nd grade, the 921, when the East Clare Brigade came down the Shannon, crossed over to Kilgeysert, etc., and joined the Mid Clare Brigade. And then they attacked three places simultaneously. That's blow by blow account of it. I have a map, I'm sure, somewhere here. So they attacked the workhouse where the army were based. They, they shot Sergeant McFadden, who happened to be an incredibly unpopular person in East Clare. And I don't think it was a coincidence. Very, very unpopular person in East Clare. So the East Clare Brigade um, settled the score there. And then you had the RAC barracks, as we saw there a second ago. And then they actually attacked the Coast Guard as well, all at the same time, all in the one night. And, and then they were able to, it could have been more tragic, well, if you, depending on your point of view, um, for the army, but they, a bullet went off one of the they really had them um in a situation where they could have decimated them but what was very common in these ambushes for some reason maybe i can't speak i never was an ambush but somebody pressed the pulled the trigger too fast before they were in the perfect position so they were able to retreat back into the workhouse and to stay there for obvious reasons the ric blatantly obviously stayed in the barracks and then the coast guard for obvious reasons, did not leave their uh, station. So the um, the East Clare and West Clare raid ran the town for the night, and um, extremely embarrassing for the RAC and the British Army. And then the uh, East Clare Brigade retreated, or didn't retreat, they just went back across to Kildare, across Shannon, etc. And it was um, it was all over. And uh, that's a different, that was a different thing altogether. Um, you know, Liam Hawke was a pretty, Liam Hawke is a pretty amazing person now because he fought for the Americans in World War One. I'm not going to go into World War One, but I can tell you, he was in the Marines. And in World War One, if the Americans wanted anything done, the first people they sent in were the Marines. And the Marines were as tough as nails. And, and, and Liam Hawke was as tough as nails. And I'll say no more. So anyway, we're in Tanakh, most beautiful village. Uh, it was here somewhere. It's gone. Uh, there's the Constabulary Barracks. Let's see, there, there it is. Uh, so we know where it was, and it was burnt down, and they saw all the officers that were in it. And there's another beautiful, it was down here. 
and then we're in Lab Ishida, Lab Ishida. Uh, so the former is the, I mean, this is what happens. You go in there, you're taking a picture, being first person you meet and you ask them, which one of them was the RIC Barks? And the first person you meet says, oh, that was the RIC Barks and that was the extension added years later. <laughs> <laughs> How lucky can you get every time you stopped? You know, the first person, hello, you know, can you tell me? Yep, yeah, yeah, that was the RC Works. Yeah, about that 20 years later. Okay, carry on. Labashida, and then these are all the people that still burned down. Lynch now is tricky enough. You know, talk about ambiguous. I mean, we'd all love to know where the one Lynch was because it's such a beautiful place. But there it is, Constabulary Barks. Okay, very vague. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here. Now, they hardly put it in a back lane, looking across a lane at nothing. So I would make a hazard, I guess, that it was this one here. Now, if you go to, from the map to a picture taken at the very same, same period, that's it here, okay? And if you go to today, we'll skip along, that's it today. Now, I would imagine, I can't, and that's the back of it, I can't imagine any other place I'd have built a barracks if I was building one in the Hinch, perfect view across the prom, and they would have seen everything. And then, of course, it was burnt down. And the unfortunate person was badly injured. It wasn't very, it was very common when they were burning down all these barracks. You know, a lot of people got seriously injured, you know, falling off roofs, um, you know, putting petrol in there, setting a match, burning themselves alive. You know, correct, I, I won't go there, but it all showed up in the witness statements, you know. Oh yeah, here it is. This is just one. You know, I was badly injured and three others were badly burned. So let me know, hut, uh, again, and it's time in between Corfin, so it's a hut. The scanner barracks, the beautiful the scanner. So this is again, very uh, ambiguous. You can see constabulary barracks, but we can only presume, um, I can only presume it's John the uh, JP Holland Center because if you go for a map, you fly through the maps, this map taken at the time, it's not unusual for the barracks to have a wall in front of it. So that is the JP Holland um, Museum, or was the museum. They moved it, as you know, museum now is further out of the village now. And that's again burnt down, etc. Listun Varna, there it is, it's a Garda barracks today. And that's where the HQ moved after. Belly Bond, they moved from Belly Bond back into. So, this is a picture I had taken 100 years ago, and there's the RSC barracks. And then, this is a picture taken, I don't know, two years ago, same hotel, and there it is again. Hasn't changed a hoot. Same angle, same road, same houses. Again, pretty big, and then it got really big because they moved Belly Bond. So, you can see packed with our black and tans, and uh, you know. RSC barracks, or RSC uh, constables, I should say. This is, I think this is my favorite one because I managed actually to get a photograph of it. It's dated 1913, but this this is the Lissy Casey yacht. So, okay, you're, you're coming from Ennis, you're past, you're going through Lissy Casey on, on the road to Kilwash. And there, this is the constabulary huts. Can you see them? They actually show up on the map, amazingly. Or well, they call it a barracks, but it was actually two huts, okay? So they were obviously burnt down, but um, it's nice. It's amazing to get a picture in there. Oh, look, there's the sergeant, that's his wife. And there are all the constables that were based there. And um, actually when they burnt it down, when they, when they abandoned it, she lived on, oh, there's a story. Um, they burnt it down while she was still in it, even though the constables had left, while well, she wasn't in it, but she was asked to leave. But that's another story. So that's the corner. And there are the officers, uh, uh, et cetera, sergeants. And you can go through individually, all of them. And then um, again, it wouldn't have been far away from Joe Bart. So you know all about that. So again, uh, and that's the car aid. That was the ambush Joe Bart did on the auxiliary. It's very rare uh, for an auxiliary ambush. And they were on bikes. But uh, the McLear Brigade um, had an ambush. Loch Rainey, most beautiful place on earth, I keep saying. And that's the house. It's in that better house, it's a cottage, it's called. We could hardly call that a cottage. But And that's the view. And the hut was there. And it was a beautiful place. And um, Morris's Mill is still there. Amazing place. Um, and a lot of history. And uh, I think this is the best part. 
that's the WC now, but it was the jail in, in previous times. And it kept, they kept the door, can you see? Um, I thought it was very good. Uh, so, uh, Crow's Bridge, ambush. Look, I'm sure Mary could tell, could stand up here and tell us all about that. And there the RSC officers are of uh, uh, the um, constables, I should say, who were given uh, constabulary medals for that ambush. Now, um, and the reason I put that in there in relation to Crow's Bridge is because the, the RIC in the Crow's Bridge ambush actually came from Mars's medals. It didn't come from Anastasia. But anyway, that's a different story. And then Thomas Russell was shot at the back of the that's his monument at the back of 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 Canon Mills up a, up a lane, and that's where he's buried. You know, in a uh, very tragic. The poor man. You know, I won't go there. But when there's when you're in a when you live in Martian in a territory that's under Martian law, not a very friendly place, and not a place you really want to live. But if somebody tells you halt in under military law, because you are now under military law, and you do not halt. You are shot dead. Simple as that. If you turn around, you are definitely shot dead. Now, what was happening, a lot of these poor men, this man was in his 70s, they were deaf. They didn't even hear the goddamn shout. So they could they had no idea somebody was shouting at them, halt. They carried on walking, shot in the back. And that's what happened to this poor man. What age was he? I can't remember. 70, yeah, it's so sad. Yeah, 76, 76. deaf, yeah. I have no hope. Anyway, um, Milton Mabe. Now, this is again the iconic photograph. Um, that actually is the courthouse. God help us. You can see how well barricaded it is with the army there. And that is the barracks. So um, let's see, where's the map? So again, as I say, you can see there's the constabulary barracks. Okay, so we're heading out to Spanish Point, and there's the courthouse. So the, the entrance, uh, and so there are all the officers. So there's the entrance there. And that's what it looks like today. And then we won't go into the Canada Cross. Um, again, uh, these are all the, you know, I, there, there are lots of witness statements on it, but I picked the shortest one and the one that had, you know, that would give get to the point and to other parts it didn't matter. So this is Mount Shannon, the most beautiful place. Now, this is again, very vague. The constabulary barracks is right in the middle of the of what I'm, uh, cross. So um, your guess is as good as mine, but I went for this one, uh, which is that one there, and that's here. And I would have guessed that would have been the barracks. And then these are all the people, etc. was burnt down, and oh, they're all the attacks. Why not? It's famous because it was the, one of the first attacks on East Clare by the East Clare Brigade, and it was in a tiny hut. Now, to most, like Conrad reckons it's still there. I, I, I snuck in the front <laughs> and I took a look at, and sure enough, there was a hut there with a red door in it. And he says, sure, it's got a red door in it. The same red door it had 100 years ago with bullet holes. Uh, but I wasn't going to knock on the door. I, I just said, take a quick look. Mullock, uh, again, doesn't exist, but you can see it certainly shows up on the map. And that's the exact, exact site. And you can see there's the pump. There's the pump still there 100 years later. So that's where the huts were. And um, Newhall, Newhall, um, a lovely part of the world. Uh, but again, it's not there. There's the Constabulary Barracks. There's the lovely house, beautiful house on the site today. New Mark and Fergus, uh, famous East Clare Brigade attack. They um, they took over, uh, one of the constables let them in and they took it over and took all the guns. And it was there. And that's smack in the middle of New Market and Fergus as you go towards uh, Drumoland. I'm not going to go there now because, and then the only reason I throw that in is that there was a famous crash there where three constables were killed. They smashed right into that part of the gate yeah, at the lodge. And um, we fly through here now, New Key, still there. Well, what's left of it. And uh, it's, that's definitely New Key. And there are all the officers in it. O'Brien's Bridge, probably my favorite because it's the most beautiful one of all, I think. And it's right next to. Murphy's pub, or sorry, Ryan's pub, for two of the principals. Um, I'm sure you maybe you're not familiar, but Michael Brennan and two of his colleagues walked in there and shot two of the RIC. They weren't even based, actually, by coincidence. They weren't based next door in the RIC barracks. They were actually based up in Cairn, 
but they must have that must have been their inverted commas their local that was the last point they had a branch bridge this was taken years before and it's just you know different pictures that was after it was burnt down in the civil war and then O'Callaghan's mills that's what's left of it now it's still there and do this super fast and then these are photographs taken just be before the war of independence yeah that would have been a common situation and Gunlo, uh Gunlo now let's see now there's a Gunlo and uh, Kalu is down here you have to turn off where the monument is and then it's in there no nothing there of course except green fields and there you are you're turning around the corner and you're coming down towards Kilulu. Quilty that's where it was now again burnt down so they were rebuilt Quinn that's definitely not burnt down but it was only there in 1916 and then it closed and no reason I have no idea why the second one closed, oh yeah but yeah, but they, but I'm only interested in 16 onwards, if that makes any sense. I mean, there are barracks all over the place. If I went before now, it was 16, you know, we'd be in, you know, we'd be all over the place, but I'm only sticking with 16 onwards. And, um, and, and who are showing all these, these are all the photographs. Joe Murr, who um, um, wrote this article, and um, these are all photographs taken in the Quinn area. And Joe gave me a few copies of them. They're, I mean, in fairness, they're excellent photographs. And see the one there to the bicycle, that's the back of Carol and Mary's. Ah, going. Oh, brilliant. Actually, that's our back. Okay. <laughs> that's super. And it's great to know. I know. I can I can put that now in the Carolyn section. Definitely. And where were all the other ones from? Can you um, any ideas? I have a few of them, yeah. Well, you were saying that, yeah. But it's it's hard when you only get. That's, you see the back down. That's Hinchy's poem before it was built as a two story. It was attached from right out on the road, one of the oldest pullers in the country. Well, we know, we know that's the front of. That's Karen there. And that's Karen then as well. Back of it, yeah. Yeah. That's Karen that is. He's a corner of it on his pole. Yeah, recognized. So look, um, Renine, again, you know, there were huts all over the place. Rouen. Now, Rouen is pretty obvious. Well, if you were familiar with the Mid Brigade, extremely important and they have they, this is the new memorial that was built there for the attack on the barracks again in the it's similar to new market an RAC officer opened the door and they were able to get in and took a you know a massive amount of arms rifles ammunition one RAC officer was killed and uh, that's the attack again we won't go through it uh, that Bill Carroll was the officer who let them in that's actually a map of the barracks uh, the map that they were given, and so they knew exactly where everything was. Pat Kirby gave me that. So uh, this is the barracks again. That's the raid. Uh, they, they went in early in the night. They actually poisoned all the dogs a couple of days before it, so there wouldn't be any interference. Scarf. That's what it. Uh, Tomos gave me that. That was what was left of it after the RA, 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 the RA brought it down, and that's this is what it looks like today. Uh, we're nearly there and um again these are all the witness statements six mile bridge well there you go still there and um and we won't go into glenwood that's the nearby so look there it is and this is very good now because this is a photograph taken 100 years ago and then by pure coincidence i came across this photograph and this is taken from the top window of the barracks okay so talking about a view over the town but it's isn't it amazing it hasn't isn't it amazing look there's the arch you know 100 years later there's the arch okay um there are all the buildings the exact same ones and look even that's the same little place and you know even the bridge hasn't changed i'm nearly i was nearly going to say the tree is there but the tree's gone um, but I thought that was a, a, a incredible. Anyway, that's Glenwood ambush, another famous ambush, and, and there's a memorial for it. And, and then there's the other ambush, the Petlow ambush, and there's a memorial for that. Timber Clan, this is the most beautiful place. Uh, it was great. Uh, it's completely finished now. I took this photograph two or three years ago, and um, it's completely rebuilt and lived in. Beautiful place. That's what it looked like 120 years ago. And, and then this is very funny because uh, Joe Barrett lived nearly right next to it. <laughs> but strangely enough, 
of all the barracks, he rarely attacked this one because they never armed themselves. You know, he had no arms to steal off them. And anytime he, he stopped them, which was rarely, it, nobody kind of annoyed them. You know, it was about the only barracks I can say because this is the pub they went to. So every now and then they'd be stopped in transit from the barracks to the pub. Uh, but they were never attacked because they never carried arms. They never seemed to upset anybody. And even more strange, if there was anything strange, they were all, uh, uh, you know, at the, at, in the last year, 1921, apart from the sergeants, they were all black and tans. And, um, and the most amazing thing is that one of them, I can't remember, was it Needham? Uh, he actually stayed in Ennis and lived in Ennis afterwards, you know? These are all great buddies. Anyway, I don't know what was going on in... Uh, and Chairman McLean was completely fake and was different than everywhere else anyway. Um, oh no, no, it's off the main road. Very dangerous place to, to stop and if you want to get killed. I'll show you, it's on the main road. Sorry now. It's on the main road. This is Ennis. Where are we going to kill Dyson? No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. kill Dyson Road. And it's on a straight and that, that was a very narrow entrance and I can tell you if you want to get killed. That's a good place to get because the cars are whizzing up and down there. But now they've widened the entrance, thank God. Uh, and that's again, as I say, that was in the middle renovations. If you it's on, the, if you're heading out to Cadiz, it's on the right hand side, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful house. Um, so look, nearly there. We're at the T's Tubber. Well, that's what's left of it. And um, it's at the corner there in Southley Barracks. Of course, Tubber is in Galway. It was a joint station with Buff. And that's yeah, so Tuller. Well, Tuller's pretty things, and that's the back of Tuller. <laughs> so you can see they were certainly not taking any chances, and um, they're all gun placements. Uh, it, it was so famous, uh, it made national papers, and there was packed with back and tans at the end of it. That's the front of it now. That's a uh, hairdresser, and that's just the, uh, just the um, courthouse as well, and, and the market house. One stage of the stables for the. Boston Graveyard at one stage Yeah. So look, they made the press. You can see pretty pretty well protected. Not sure if it ever got burnt down, mustn't have it. And then we're nearly there, White Gate, last one. And it was um, Paddy Laurie helped me find that. And I think that, that is the last one. It is, yeah. So look, I'm sorry for keeping you, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. And as I say, it's a, yeah, it's a whatever, express. Um, uh, way of showing all the barracks, but it's more important that it's actually just the hint. This is only just a flavor, but you can go into the thousands, thousands of RIC who were there and the Black and Tans and read their life history as well. Or not their life history, but their history of what they did when they were in care. Oh, yeah, that was, I think. Um,